Hi, I'm Jacob Beningo, president of Beningo Embedded Group. So I'm here at Embedded World this year, first to give a couple of presentations. Uh, earlier this week I gave a presentation on low power design techniques. I also gave a presentation on a new type of programming language, which is MicroPython, which is just Python running on an embedded microcontroller. Then I also got a chance to give some presentations on real-time operating systems, things like how you debug them and some of the latest and greatest techniques. There's a lot that I've seen interesting this year at the booths. Uh, one of the major trends I think I've seen in the microcontroller industry is a move towards abstracting out the microcontroller. So a lot of the silicon vendors are starting to get to the point where instead of us as developers having to develop the software ourselves, they're starting to put abstraction layers and developing the drivers for us. I think there's a, a couple notable companies that I've seen so far uh, at the conference. The first one is Renesas. Uh, they have their Synergy platform, which they're providing fully qualified drivers and middleware and real-time operating system all pre-integrated for developers. So they're able to go into the IDE and literally drop these components in and start developing their project, not at the lowest levels of the microcontroller, but at the application level right off the bat. Uh, they're not the only ones that are doing something similar. They're the only ones that have qualified the software. Uh, there's also uh, Cypress uh, Semiconductors that's been doing this as well. I saw an interesting demo where they went through and they basically had blocks that they drop onto their IDE. Once they block them on, they can then drag lines in between them to see how they, to configure how they interact with each other. So that was very interesting and Microchip also showed some things at their Atmel Studio where the auto-generated code was actually human readable. Uh, and it kind of had that same idea of where things were abstracted out so that developers now, they don't have to write that low level code anymore. So it was very interesting to see. Yeah, so there were a lot of things I saw with IoT and security that were kind of buzzing around the show this year. Uh, one of the big ones I think I saw was a big push towards the, the ARM trust zone. Uh, this, was, this is a new microcontroller, a new type of microcontroller. They're Cortex-M processors, they're the M23 and uh, 33. And they have a, a new peripheral on board to help you write secure code. So this is something that, it's in the, in the works, it was just announced, it sounds like it's going to be out later this year, but it's really going to help provide developers with a way to develop secure code for IoT devices. Uh, along those lines too, there's been a lot of talk about how to integrate new Wi-Fi modules. I've seen a lot of different types of modules out on the floor, uh, and a lot of frameworks to help make it easier to integrate those into our systems. There were quite a few interesting demos. I think the most interesting ones were all around machine learning and autonomous vehicles. Uh, now, autonomous vehicles being not necessarily just large you know, automobiles, but also like drones and rovers and those types of things. So NVIDIA had a really cool demonstration at their booth from one of the companies that they work with that had a rover that was designed to run on Mars. And it had the ability to go and actually visually see obstacles ahead of it, identify them, also identify defects on, for example, bricks. Uh, if, you know, if you want to you know, sort through things, not that you want a rover to go and actually sort bricks, but the, the machine learning, it can look at different types of situations and recognize that, hey, this is, maybe this is a good rock, this is a bad rock, oh, this is a rock I want to sample. So it was actually really interesting to see how it could learn just based on simple images that were sent from a smartphone down to the device, and it was able to look through them and decide, hey, this is how uh, this image is good or not. So very interesting. It also knew its location. It could generate a map of its location and where it was in relationship to other things in the area. So very exciting, and uh, it was a really neat demo. Yeah, so I'm going to be attending a number of conferences this year. Uh, the next conference I'm going to be attending is going to be an Embedded Systems Conference in Boston. At that conference, I'm going to be talking about bootloader design. I'm actually going to do a tutorial session that's half a day. So we'll be going and looking at all the details of how you actually create a secure bootloader. And then I'm also going to be talking about real-time operating systems as well, the fundamentals and how you start developing systems using them properly. Then there's also going to be like ARM TechCon a little bit later in the year and uh, the Sensors Expo. There's a couple of different places people can go to see a little bit more of my content and the material that I develop. Uh, first one that you can go to is uh, beningo.com. I have a blog there. Um, there's also a bunch of free resources, example source code, links to webinars that I've done with other partners as well. Uh, things like uh, RTOS fundamentals uh, that you can find there. Then there's also a blog that I do on design news and also on embedded related 